separate and solitary confinement. That's right. It was a terrible thing. Yes, it was a certainly a terrible was a thing. That's right. Had a point and I'm you had to wear a mask? Yes. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. people that were in them years today. Of course, the prison society came into it and tried to improve some of the system, which I doubt if they did any any real good to it. Well, I, I'm, know, it uh, was personally, I'm against the prison society. It seems and, uh, to me that the, the churches is, um, has failed the penal institutions and the people that's behind those doors. You know, like we've had um, chaplains from churches who goes out to the prison and maybe speak a word of faith or something, what have you, and come back to the church, preach another sermon, but never really relates what is going on to the congregation, you know. The church sets up its own priorities as far as prison is concerned and never gets down to the real root of what is prison all about and what are we as individuals of the, the, this society going to do about the change in the prison institution. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because as you know, there was no churches in prison. It was only through our new Commissioner Pressey that we finally have brought churches inside the institution because the prison society, as you know, is a Quaker organization that believed in no churches, so therefore there was no churches instituted in the prisons. So, and only a few years ago we had a problem. So how are we going to build prison, uh, churches inside the institution? Because we have different type of religions. So one smart architect come along and said, well, we'll have one church and we'll have a revolving altar. We'll have it uh, for uh, Catholics and we'll turn it, we'll have for Protestants, et cetera. And then the problem came up, well, what are we going to do with the Jews? Because we don't have, you know, we're not going to have a separate synagogue for the Jews. So the right architect and those, uh, those that are deal with penology says, well, we don't have to worry about the Jews. There's no Jews inside the institution. And that's exactly, and there's a right up in White Hill Industrial School, there is no Jews in but White Hill Industrial School. Once again, you, uh, so there you are. I'm glad you brought right that back up. To this, we come back to uh, minority groups again, you see. This particular group, all right, black people. It would seem to me that prisons, as we see it today, is made for black people. And Italians. You see? Black, black people. and Italians. What's You're wrong right. with people? Mm -hmm. That's because right. Because all people are in these institutions. And I think the church has a right to relate to all the people that's in the, in the prison and has a, a right to communicate whatever it finds to the people who is outside of the prison. Mm -hmm. It seems to me, though, that when the society imposes a penal institution on our people, uh, it's not uh, looking at it from the standpoint of uh, a color line. Uh, I think uh, uh, it depends upon the viewpoint you take when you talk about uh, prison reform. Uh, uh, we can go back, for example, to the uh, first prison reform uh, in America, which actually took uh, place in a uh, fair city of brotherly love right here in Philadelphia. In 1829, uh, the uh, uh, authorities who uh, were responsible for supervising our penal institutions in those days, and these were largely religionists and uh, people who were in education, uh, they felt that uh, uh, a primary method of rehabilitating a, uh, an incarcerated prisoner would be to keep him from, from having any communication whatsoever with other prisoners because uh, obviously by communicating with uh, other prisoners, so the thought went, uh, he would learn more evil things. So the men were, practically speaking, put in uh, solitary confinement. Well, they had no opportunity whatsoever to speak with other people. Well, that was considered prison reform in those days. And quite obviously, today, we look upon this as an absolute, unmitigated horror. I'll so make it different with you. That's one of the parole rules today. Mm -hmm. uh, it hasn't changed. The right. parole rule being what? That a prisoner... You're not allowed to associate or correspond? Afterward, yes. Right. After or, or, or with. That is a, that is is a rule different. which yeah. uh, 
is more often honored in its breach because it's almost impossible. It is impossible for a person, especially one who lives in a ghetto area, to completely refrain from having anything to do with someone else who is on parole or probation. Of course. But I wanted to respond to uh, one of the interesting things that you said about this separate and solitary confinement. Down at Eastern Penitentiary, then known as Cherry Hill, and incidentally I live about a block from it and I, I can see the entire institution. Um, in the very old days, back in the 1820s, uh, they were so separate that uh, each cell had its own individual exercise yard. And so at various times during the day, uh, people would go out into their yards and they would not be allowed to have anything to do with anyone else because every other cell had its exercise period at that time. So no one was able to even communicate with the person next to him. Uh, at first, some of the institutions were built so that the men would be brought in and there was no entrance in the inside, just a little space where food could be put in and where the cell window could be opened up so that they could hear uh, a, a sermon being preached or so they could hear something which was being announced. But as you said, the first reforms did come in Philadelphia, and I don't like to disagree with Joe, but I do think that the Pennsylvania Prison Society had a lot to do with the reforms and that uh, we would be even farther behind than we are now if it had not been for the Pennsylvania Prison Society working for these humanitarian reforms from the early days. Yes, and following through with this, uh, I think that the uh, modern attitude of our city and the, uh, the authorities uh, in our city is to be uh, uh, truly supportive of the problems that are engendered by uh, uh, criminal behavior. Now, I, I think we start with a basic presumption that uh, 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 there is nobody who feels that uh, a prison is a logical answer to society's problems. The problem is that when you're dealing with an individual who is not able to conform to the uh, uh, social responsibilities imposed on him by society, regardless of these reasons, this individual has got to somehow uh, be uh, considered as uh, uh, a unique individual in our society and must be dealt with. Hopefully he's dealt with in a way which is therapeutic. We want to change his behavior. Mm -hmm. Now this is what we should be struggling for. Rehabilitation is the absolute necessary goal for all types of uh, uh, impositions of uh, uh, activity, whether it be a prison or uh, reporting to one's parole board or what have you. Uh, still, don't you think you have to define what criminal behavior is? Earlier you said there's such thing as cardinal rules of human behavior which uh, cannot be broken. Yes. Uh, do you really believe that these are uh, the same the world around? After all, uh, in one day and age, uh, in ancient times, it was considered a crime, a terrible crime, if a man and wife didn't have as many children as they could. Yes. My guess is that within a very few decades, it will be considered a crime if people have more than two children yes. because the world is getting so crowded. It is to that point now. <laughs> what about abortions? Mm -hmm. You know, um, we have uh, in some churches, you know, some faiths, well, you've just committed a horrible sin if you have abortion. You know, yet we have people outside of the walls who have had abortions and nothing has been done about it. And we have women on the inside of the walls who had abortions for, for one reason or other and probably because of not being able to afford another child and not having any place to turn. They seek out an abortionist and they have an abortion and then they get arrested and locked up for having committed a crime against the society because they had an abortion. Well, these are, but the rich woman can go to Sweden. The rich woman can go society. on and have an abortion. Nothing's yes. done about it. So where <laughs> is the real crime and who yes. is it that is committing it? Well, in this case, you're talking about something which is, uh, if viewed in the uh, proper context, a, uh, a, a true problem that society as a whole is facing. And the individual involved is purely and simply a victim of a, uh, a paradox. <laughs> on the one hand, uh, uh, the person in his or her own mind feels that this particular activity is absolutely necessary and looks at it as a, a, a gray area rather than a black or white area. And unfortunately, someone gets <coughs> caught and this poor person has to suffer the consequences while someone else gets off scot-free. <coughs> I agree there are great inconsistencies and paradoxes in our whole structure of law in America. But going back to the uh, question which uh, uh, Peter asked me uh, concerning uh, rules of cardinal virtue, there are certain things which are, are, are going to be fundamentals. Yes, such as. Fundamental. Yeah, I, I think you can talk about things like truth. Naturally, there's an interpretation of what truth means, mm -hmm. but I still think that truth, as a dip, disemboweled concept, can stand on its own. It's an essential virtue. Uh, honesty, as interpreted in many, many ways, but yet honesty per se is a I, cardinal virtue. I disagree with you even with that. You've picked truth and honesty. Yes. 
uh, is this a virtue when a doctor, for instance, will tell the truth to a patient that he discovers that someone has cancer and is going to die? Is this a virtue for him to tell the truth and be honest? You're going to die within six months. This can have a devastating effect. There are instances where even truth and honesty I don't consider as being uh, cardinal virtues. Well, I think a situation such as you mentioned now is one of the many complications which do uh, tend to make our society an extraordinarily complicated device. There are no uh, uh, absolutes. We know this. But yet, uh, what would truth be in this interpretation? Here. We're yes. getting off the subject because yeah. abortion is one thing and the truth is another thing. We're interested in prisoners. And the, the you're, you said recently, I want to answer, answer your statement about the prison society. Now, where was the pr prison society only in 1954 when the uh, Ray on the right of me and Sam on the left of me was put into solitary confinement and given a, a raw meatball that was bad. Where was the prison society then? Was your Mr. Fraser there at that time helping him to see to it that they would got him out? There was only one reason why he was in solitary confinement. You know why? Because he had 18 packs of cigarettes in his cell. You know, and where was justice, the kangaroo court that we have inside the institution? There is no justice there at all. This is what I'm getting back out to. And if, forget about the medical profession, about the soci sociologists, the psychologists, the criminologists, the penologists, all those that deal in the human mind, forget them, because there's only one thing that prisoner wants, and I'm going to state it. And that is a job, and he wants no charity, and he wants a home. He wants to go back into that society, and he wants to have his dignity back again the way he was before he went into, into that prison. In fact, he was better off before he got into, into prison because he had a wife, he had a child, he had a home, he had friends, and then after 25 years of incarceration, he was left out back into society when nobody wanted him, everybody rejected that man. Joe, right, a guy needs a job. A guy needs a job. What would you say about the fact that down in Washington there's a thing known as the Federal Reserve Board that controls how many unemployed there are going to be in the United States by adjusting the credit. They can determine whether there's going to be three million unemployed or four million or five million by uh, determining credits. And they've been doing this for years and years. What do you say about that? A guy, everybody deserves a job but they are automatically saying that a certain number of million people will not have jobs. Well, wait a minute. Our people don't have jobs because of the parole rules, because they have to go out and say that, look, I'm an ex-prisoner. You know, okay, spell out your particulars. What did you do? I committed a murder. I committed a rape. I committed a holdup. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't use you. And then you go down and you lie like some of my people did, got a job in the post office and got two to five years because they lied in their application. My people want to go to work. And if it wasn't for our people, they're in the hospital. They're taking care of you. You know what they're doing? They're washing dishes and cleaning out your pan. And they're in the car washes. And they're in the, in the worst type of jobs that you ever know. That's all they can get and with the minimum wages and try to get an apartment for our people. Why, do you know how much you need for an apartment today? First of all, you have to have references. <coughs> Where do you get an apartment? This man has no home. He has no job. He has no friends. What do you do with him? Do you go out and uh, uh, expect somebody to say, here, here it is to you? And then, you know what? You did have a person to do that. After he just says, come on, I'm going to give you a home. I gave 3,500 of them a home. I gave 3,500 a job. <laughs> And I also took care of them financially. And know what they did? The society rejected me because I was, you know what? You're too good. You shouldn't do that. Professional jealousy comes into it. The judges, the, the district attorney, the police administrators, all those are against you because you've done that. Well, you it's see? not necessarily yeah. a question of being against you, Joe. It's just that our society is an imperfect instrument, and we do have an imperfect solution to the problem of a man who's committed a crime. Which Let's presume, though, this individual now has uh, served his uh, uh, debt to society. He's been in prison, and he's now out on parole. And let's say this man had been convicted of a crime of embezzlement. As a potential employer, uh, I would want to know that this person had been guilty of a crime of embezzlement, not so much to keep him from working, but to keep him from handling money in my firm. Which I would be inclined. Why? Sir, For the simple that reason that this man. The reason is this. The reason is this. Although the man has 
served his debt to society, and this should be considered as a closed uh, uh, issue. The point is that he does have a tendency to be dishonest with money, and it would be unrealistic for me to suggest that his going to prison has now reformed him and changed this tendency. He this does doesn't mean that I wouldn't hire this man to be a truck driver. It doesn't mean I wouldn't hire him to do something that would be socially prestigious except in the field of money. But I'm pointing out that as an example of a citizen who would be concerned, I feel that the rules that society has imposed in this instance are just and right. They may be imperfect, but there's a reason for you talked then about the rehabilitation, is, and you said this man has a tendency. Yes. What I back. hear here no, I, I is I said he had a tendency to embezzle, and by virtue of this, I wouldn't expose him to that opportunity again, where I am a lawyer. These uh, programs uh, have been going for 20 years, these kind of right. talks Once about been rehabilitation, for years, rehabilitation, and yet everybody right. says about building prisons. Building prisons right. and, and what I'm saying and is... And, 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 and trying to, to inform yeah. the society, yeah. who is the society, the low class, the middle class, the upper class, who is the so society? We want to know who they are. Yes. You know who society is to me? Those people that are sophisticated. Those people like the administrators. That's the society to me because they make the laws, not the uh, people. Joe, what's the alternative? They're the, the people that I consider society. Let's let that the 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 man the doesn't thing here, read the I newspaper. Hear. He doesn't care about that. No, let that you get a word in edgewise. <laughs> <laughs> you can the get an edgewise, honey. Believe me, you get plenty of them in edgewise. Where does a person pay his debt to society? It never stops. Right. Once He's you're a prisoner, right. you, right. never, right. then, you, no know, you never get stopped. You yes. can't get a job. Right. The such very moment that uh, um, someone uh, breaks in a store or something, you comes right back and grab the prisoner that uh, may not have even been anywhere near the scene, right. but they grabs this person up and it takes them back again. So as I hear you talking, you would not hire this man. You want to? You would put him into another field, but you wouldn't let him have Pushing money. Right back into crime. We'd push him right a back into crime again. Well, I didn't say no that. Now, hold on, Daisy. Let me make my point clear. I would be glad to hire this man, but I would not put him in a psychological circumstance which would set up the same sequence of events that took place before that caused him to commit his crime. Let's change the sequence. Wait, but the deterrence. Deterrence. The, 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 the deterrence. You talk the about deterrence, deterrence, deterrence right? Now, look, the idea no, here is to be he therapeutic committed, he in might be a better risk for you. Let me make my point. The way I feel about this situation, I think I'm representing a viewpoint which many people in society hold. There's no feeling of uh, trying to keep the prisoner forever mindful of his crime against society. This isn't the idea. The yeah, idea is to recognize that the person has done something and therefore channel his activity in a way which is going to make it easier for him to conform in a socially constructive way to our society. Now we must know that our society is imperfect. God knows that all of us uh, are struggling with the problem of human <coughs> relationships and there is no panacea. There is no absolute solution. Certainly our penal system is not an absolute uh, solution. No. There are very, very few people who would suggest that uh, the idea of incarcerating a person for a crime is in and of itself a solution yeah. to a problem. Yeah. I think that society generally looks at this thing with a, a feeling of true frustration because they know that something better has got to be done. The problem is just what is this better thing? Now our sociologists, you know our psychologists are working on it now. What do you mean? Like I'll you, tell you Joe, what's better. are apparently doing a magnificent job by you well, because pragmatically you. you're hiring let me them. Answer you. That's great. Go ahead. Well, I'll answer you. You know what's better? Constructive and humane type of basis inside the institution while he's incarcerated. Don't take this man and throw him in with everybody else and say walk that line on the com communistic and socialistic basis. You go to bed together, you sleep together, you eat together, you go to the bathroom together, you do everything together. You're not allowed to think for yourself, and yet you want that man after 25 years of incarceration to come back out in society and start thinking for himself. And then what happens to you? You start to hit another set of rules, parole rules. Not the rules of society, but parole rules. You're not allowed to do this, you're not allowed to do that. You got this guy so mixed up, he doesn't know what to do. The only thing for him to do is to commit another crime and go back into prison. That's all he has well, to the do. Fact because that parole rules because are based you will on not hire experience. him because you just said he, he committed an act of embezzlement. You will not hire him. So that means you're not going to hire a murderer. That means you're not going to hire a rapist. That means you're, because of some particular reason. Now, hold on, Joe. I mean, you're putting words in my mouth. I would oh, suggest no, this. Not. Let's presume I that someone came to me to be hired. If it were a person without a prison record and he was qualified and there was someone would with a prison guy? record and he was qualified, would I would you give sell the job me to the person without the prison me. record. Without. Would you sell me furniture if I never had any credit rating whatsoever? If, uh, the first time I come up to you and I say, I'd like to buy $400 worth of furniture. Would you sell it to me? 
Well, I'm not in the furniture Wait business. Wait a minute. Sure. If you were in the furniture business, would you? It would depend no. upon many No. You said, did you have any credit though. rating? It would say, no, I never borrowed factors. a dime in my life. I want to buy that, that bedroom set, but I need credit. And you know what your answer will be? No. Now, if I go out and make 100 debts, you know, and pay them off, you'll say, yeah, I'll sell you. You're a pretty good risk. That's what you're saying to me. Well, what I'm but saying, saying this man has Dr. already Shire, proved himself. Joe, he committed this crime. Anything. No, Joe. You're I'm sorry, saying that you but... believe in rehabilitation, yet you don't give the guy a chance. No, I'm not saying this. I'm so talking about a you constructive approach to human problems. Of Regardless of whether it happens you to you, I'm going to say this. Why? No, why no, let me make my point again. In other words, you're saying you would not give an ex-alcoholic a job in a liquor store. Is that Yes, that's precisely it. I would not give an ex-alcoholic a job in a liquor store, but I would help that ex-alcoholic to get a job somewhere else yes. because society owes a debt to that person. And that debt is a debt of adjustment. I, we have got to help this person make an adjustment. And you don't do this guys by putting on to him on the same train that he was on before. Be a Which is the that's same thing that we're faced with. Dali, you're suggesting that the alternative is always a demeaning job. It might not be a demeaning job at all. A man may come out, for example, a fellow who had a real fine capacity for mathematics. He may have been for, before been a, 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 a clerk in an engineering firm. Well, it may well be that this person has a potentiality for architecture. And I would certainly, and I'm sure society in general, would say, if this man has a capacity, let's give him the opportunity. Let's let him go to school. Let's do the things that are necessary to rehabilitate him. But this does not mean that you're permissive in the area of this man's true problem. Now, we have to face the fact of human imperfection. Certainly, all of us have problems. And that. society recognizes yeah. that okay. these problems exist yeah. everywhere. Society is essentially compassionate. The problem is that society, society is compassionate, society but doesn't is know how to apply this compassion. Do you know, do you know our prisoners, we have some of the best jailhouse lawyers in the country. Some of them can write the best brief you ever written. This is interesting to you, Dick. But do you know that a man could could study and be a doctor for the amount of years that he serves inside of an institution, 25 years. You can be a doctor, I think, in 10 years. But what good is he being a doctor? The society won't allow him to practice once he's let out. You see my point? Because you're one of the segment of society that rejected that embezzlement. What about him? He's rejecting for some other reason. And what about Daisy? She's rejecting for some other purpose. Joe? We can train our people inside the institution to be any type of professional man that you can think about. Because here's a man that has spent 25 years in prison. He's the best typist around. Ask him if he's doing a uh, do, uh, printer. Ask him if he's doing this type of occupation today. You can ask him. Joe, one of the problems. Are you, are you Sam? Uh, no. Uh, but uh, let, me, let me straighten one thing, and may I um, uh, just disagree with uh, Joe uh, in uh, a sense of speaking of uh, man serving uh, time. Uh, we say, uh, yes, uh, I uh, spent considerable time in, and uh, uh, it's how you come out. I came out well qualified for positions in uh, the uh, clerical field. I come out qualified uh, in the printing field. Uh, I, let's say that um, uh, I uh, can't go along with Cal for saying that if a man was in prison for embezzlement that uh, he wouldn't get, give him the opportunity to handle money. Uh, I disagree only on this, Cal, that uh, uh, he may be your best man for the simple reason the prison has changed him. I won't use the word re rehabilitation because that's a word that has been kicked around and it, at, to this extent it has no bearing. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I say it, it has no meaning, I'm sorry. But I say he have reconverted himself or he have reconfirmed himself inwardly uh, that he can be trusted to handle money uh, and will not be the uh, uh, fellow he was uh, when he first uh, committed this crime. Circumstances may have caused him to embellish the money. We know that. Sam, one of uh. the things is, though, that, and I can see why Cal thinks as he does. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons is that in prison, this man, for a period of maybe 10 years, has not embezzled any money. Mm -hmm. uh, but he hasn't had the opportunity to. He's been in a totally unrealistic environment. Mm -hmm. And until we do away with some of these completely, uh, totally unrealistic unre rules, uh, as Joe said, it's sort of uh, dehumanizing dehuma there. Uh, there are basic rules to be followed. There are minute rules to be followed. The man is not living in a realistic atmosphere, and he goes out from being incarcerated where he has no freedoms. All of a sudden, one day, he's out. Now, 
this man has not done anything wrong for the past couple of years. He's been in a, an, a, an artificial, totally artificial environment. Mm -hmm. He has not had the opportunity to see what he would do faced with the risks. Mm -hmm. He has been in, in this artificial environment and now all of a sudden he's out. We don't know that whether <coughs> or not his staying in jail, incarcerated, is what kept him from uh, Re embezzling something. We don't know how he will react when he's put back in the same situation. And that's one of the reasons why we need a lot of other things in prison. We don't know whether he had something wrong with him psychologically or psych uh, psychiatrically. And what we do know is that under the present conditions, he hasn't received the proper treatment in prison. He, if he had something wrong with him psychologically, which caused him to commit the crime at first, he might go right out after being released from prison and do it again. This is if true. we had these yes. reforms in prison, then true. the story would be different. And then maybe Cal would be willing to hire someone if a psychiatrist or psychologist would say that this man is no longer likely to commit that type of crime because he has changed, not just because he's been in, period, in jail for a period of years. Well, what about, um, you know, we're talking about reform in prison, reform after prison. What about some kind of reform in here in this society Amen. before Amen. going Amen. into prison? Right. Right. I'd like to hear some of you problems. speak to that. Mm -hmm. Society itself is, as I said earlier, it's, it's imperfect. Mm -hmm. And it's the, the stresses and strains of society which in large measure are responsible for the, uh, the very situations which cause people to be convicted of crimes. Oh. And, uh, but finally, through what Sam said I'd to like me, to be a little more yes. specific. There, it's not enough yeah. to simply say society is imperfect. Don't mean I don't know if anybody agrees with me, but I think American society is imperfect because we don't face up to a thing known as a racism. Uh, it started off right when Europeans started, came into this country, and uh, we refused to absorb the Indian American Indians and take them. Uh, we talk a lot about freedom and everything, but our way of freedom was to get rid of the, for example, the Massachusetts Bay Colony, where my ancestors were. Fifteen years after they arrived at Plymouth Rock, they passed a resolution, we must exterminate the Pequod race. And I sing a song about Osceola, Osceola, in the dungeon at St. Augustine. Uh, and until we face up to the fact there is a thing known as racism in America, we're not really being honest about saying, well, it's just uh, their imperfections in society. The thing known as racism, where black people and brown people and other kinds of people do not get a fair shake. And when they don't get a fair shake, they're going to naturally find themselves at odds with the law. There's a black friend of mine, a singer, wrote a song. When one man's got a million and another ain't got a dime, that's when law and order is another name for crime. Well, this is true, Peter, but yet uh, recognizing we do have racism in our society, uh, the very hopeful sign that I can uh, uh, suggest is our uh, uh, gradual amelioration of this position. For example, right now we wouldn't have the, uh, uh, the last uh, cries of the out-and-out -out, uh, Southern segregationists who recognize they're fighting a losing battle as uh, we have now achieved nationwide integration in our schools. To think of nationwide integration in our schools a generation ago, it would have been considered an impossibility in one generation. Well, and it was one decade ago that people not were North Carolina sat on a stool. Let me finish my point, Joe. Well, this is another go? subject. I yes. don't want to get into All right, the matter. Yes. But the point the I'm making is though, Joe. They are not related. related. Yeah, they, the point I'm making to Peter is that we have had a tremendous amount of progress in this area of racial relationships. Your concern is tremendous. Now, I would like to answer Sam, though. Sam suggested that my idea of not hiring this investor to handle money is the problem. question. Uh, I want to know whether would you would marry a, a prolee or not. <laughs> you haven't said a word. I haven't had a chance. <laughs> you have I don't a chance know. Now. It d all depends on the person. It all depends. Yes. What happens if you're confronted by a parole agent and say, do you know that uh, you haven't known about it? You were going out and you was madly in love with this person. And then all of a sudden, this parole agent comes over to you and say, you know, uh, you're going out with John Jones, and do you know that John Jones committed this particular type of crime? Let's say, for instance, raped a five-year-old girl. Why are you getting you a little dramatic with this young lady? No, I'm not getting you're dramatic. You're setting up a these situation are, that in no way, shape, or form relates to her environment, are, her background, and she can make her own decision as to Wait a minute, these are with. facts that happens to our prisoners yes, today. I'm talking about the facts. I'm asking her a question her. because Don't these... Don't on the spot this way, I'm not putting her on the spot. I'm putting all my prisoners on the spot because a lot of them have been jilted by their girlfriends because of parole agents. You must tell the parole agent 
that you're going to get married and he must meet your girlfriend. If it's he has she, to approve. He has to oh. approve. Could you imagine that? A parole agent has to come up and say, well, I approve or disapprove. As if you're going to your parents. You have a parole agent here has to approve or disapprove. And this and happened many, many times because the particulars are spelt out. Yes, he but committed the parole a agent isn't a Simon Legree. You're suggesting that the pro parole agent is a villain in the piece, and he's simply not. It's just the unfortunate fact that a crime was committed, and something has got to be done by society, society to see that the person who committed the, the crime after his release is on the road toward rehabilitation. I mean, they can but you the 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 said something to me. May I hear, may I hear Cal's question, Yes, please. I'd like to answer your yes, uh, uh, comment. Go right ahead. this fellow who embezzled yes. and uh, who I would be disinclined to hire. I would uh, reply that uh, my decision would be based on the irrefutable logic of results. Mm -hmm. And I think this is fundamental to progress. Mm -hmm. We have seen this man in action, and the man has embezzled funds. This is proven by the fact that he was sent to jail. Mm -hmm. He then comes out and he wants a job. Society provides him with a job, and I think most men would provide this fellow with a job. See, I would disagree with yeah. you here, Joe. If they knew we the have, facts, they would. We have 800 of them. Do you have so 800 jobs? Right providing now? the man has uh, the ability. If the man has the ability, if he's well trained, if the man is well trained, of course. You find 800 jobs for me tomorrow morning. I would say though, if this man came to work for me and then he showed an interest in handling finance, I would then allow him to gradually assume this responsibility. Oh, I, see you, you see? I see your point. In other, uh, yes. in other words, you would not uh, take him direct from prison as uh, uh, an employee handling money. That's right. But you would give him a job in another capacity, and uh, then after he had proven himself that he could be trusted, you would. That's uh, exactly right. Yes. Yes. You same old stereotype, the same old stereotype. <laughs> Dehumanizing right, human beings. That's right, Tess. This is all I see here. Because a man embezzles I he money himself by, by, uh, and has paid his debt to society, which I think is a shame that you even have to use the terms pay your debt to society yes. because society owes us That's so much. That's an understatement. You never you pay see. your debt to society. You never do. I know because I'm in the community and I see what this society inflicts upon the man who's been in the penal institution. He's never paid his debt to society. That is, uh, I, let me say, uh, Daisy, that uh, um, we say that we, you never pay your debt to society, but that society does accept it, that we say the law enforcement does not let you pay your debt to society well, who, because they never let you forget it. Who controls the law? Uh, no, well, the law, the society. The uh, well, law I say, is placed there by the society. Yes. You see. Yes. I don't know about that. I well, I wouldn't see no other society? way for it to get see, there. Who is the society? Who is right. it that first said we have to build a penal institution? Well, I'm saying to like put somebody the society, in, rather than I, saying why don't we have do more hospitals? Sellers, see, I'm just employees. saying the society as a general Your uh, speaking <laughs> does not know you as an individual that has committed a crime or that you are an, a criminal. I'm saying society. When I'm speaking of society, I'm talking about uh, Cal, uh, Gene, Dick, Pete, that never have seen you in their life before, yourself. Uh, uh, we're taking uh, society as a whole, not uh, as an individual person right. that knew you uh, before and after, I'm saying. But I'm saying that uh, they, I believe, would accept you. I'm talking about if he doesn't know you from the jump. Uh, but uh, the law, it seemed like they are the ones that never let you pay your debt to society because they're always forever making reference, regardless what uh, may come up. Uh, one of the problems, though, is the, the fact law. that the people that do commit crimes tend to repeat them so frequently. No, I'm not sure. Oh, no, they no, have no, to. Cal, Cal, no, no, Cal, 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 no, Cal, let me, let, let me, let me, uh, straight, let me straighten like out on this to, to an extent. <laughs> uh, statistics. Only you only a uh, society only go by statistics about what the press gives them or uh, uh, prints for them to read. Uh, this is the only way that you would know the pro and con of who is making good, who is repeaters, yes. and so forth. Uh, have you ever checked this uh, statistic to find out that it is more men come out of prison that are doing good than the ones that are repeating. Uh, now, I believe if you, you would t st uh, check the statistics, you would find out that it was only maybe about 2% of the total uh, that are repeaters. I thought it was 50%. Oh, no, no, uh, definitely no, not. No, 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 no. Do you know that the actual crime rate is down? Do you know we only have 5,000 people? 
an institution in the state prisons and only 6,000 in the county institution. There's only 11,000 prisoners in this whole state and it's we on a decline, and people keep talking about statistics, about the rising criminals that are going back into prison. These, you know who these are? The politicians are using these for platforms, you know, say, money. oh, yeah, you know, well, I'm going to win this election. Like okay. I feel um, like uh, the politicians are faced with a problem of trying to uh, uh, Pete, deal with this uh, uh, situation of people committing crime. Right here. I think this, we're getting a little bit heated. I think this might be a good well, time for uh, I don't know if Joe will. <laughs> well, I'd like to uh, I have Pete. I'm about death row. Yeah, I'd like to have uh, Pete uh, dedicate this number, uh, not only to those that are uh, uh, right now, which I, there's approximately uh, 21 uh, ready, ready for uh, the death row, but all the prisoners uh, in our state of Pennsylvania. And I'm sure I would like to get this thing uh, broadcast to Commissioner Prassy some way and see that they can hear this number of yours, Pete. Walking down death row I sang for three men destined for the chair Walking down death row I sang of lives and loves in other years Walking down death row I sang of hopes that used to be Through the bars into each separate cell Yes, I sang to one and two and three If you'd only stuck together, you'd not be here If you could have loved each other's lives, you'd not be sitting here And if only this you could believe you still might, you might still be reprieved. Walking down death row, I turned a corner and found my surprise. There were women there as well, and babies in their arms before my eyes. Walking down death row I sang again of hopes that used to be But the thought of that contraption down the hall Waiting for whole families, one dozen, two or three If you'd only stuck together, you'd not be here If you could have loved another's child as well as your own You'd not be sitting here And if only this you could believe you still might, you might still be reprieved. Walking down death row, I concentrated singing to the young. I sang of hopes that flickered still. I tried to mouth each separate human tongue. Walking down death row I sang of hopes that still might be Singing, singing down death row To each separate human cell One billion to a three If you'd only stick together You'd not be here If you could have loved each other's lives We'd not be sitting here And if only this we could believe we still might we might still be reprieved. Well, I suppose, Joe, you think I got off the subject, but I really believe you can't separate the problems of men in prison, the problems of rehabilitated prisoners, with the problem of the whole world. The whole American nation is going to be judged as criminals after this Vietnam business is over. 
I don't necessarily agree with that, Peter. I know you don't agree with me. Well, not only this, but I say that we have recognized that our society is, is, is imperfect and we're doing all that we can humanly do right at this point to change these problems. I For example, we're pulling out of Vietnam. No. We're pulling out of Vietnam. Our president has committed our nation to do this and he's in the process of doing this. He's our elected representative. He deserves our loyalty and support. Now, I'm speaking now as a Democrat, not a Republican, and yet I look at this man as a representative of our society and we stick with our president. We support him loyally. you have a choice? Of course we have a choice. We have a choice of being anarchistic. And when we're anarchistic, we destroy our society. And this is precisely what's being done by so many people today. They repudiate the basic values that our society has imposed on us. And that means we have imposed on ourselves. The pris prison system would be one of them. Well, it's unfortunate that this thing works this way, but that's right? the way it is. You're a reformer. I don't of think course so. I'm a reformer. I don't yeah, think I'm looking so. for change. Right. Looking but I'm looking for change within the lawful context of our society as we know it. Because after all, what are we comparing? If you're comparing our society with a, a, a panacea, a vacuum, a Shangri-La that never existed, then truly we're imperfect. But you're, if you're comparing our society with other societies in this world, with our own society of a generation ago, of our own society of a hundred years ago, you see enormous progress. And as an American, I'm proud of it. I think that we live in a society which is without exception absolutely without exception, the great society of the world today. Uh, we uh, are doing our best to be democratic. The very fact that there can be an interracial dialogue, such as we're having here now, would have been an absolute impossibility a generation ago. Mm -hmm. The fact that we have a, a, a Negro sitting on the Supreme Court, I think is absolutely tremendous. The fact that we have generals in our army, people in our Navy, in positions of outstanding leadership, people in our legislature, in our Congress, and the Senate of the United States representing minority groups is to me a sign of unmitigated progress. And I'm proud to be an American because of this. And I can't to me, understand I see that. it as a, 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 a form of tokenism. That's not tokenism. Because it would seem to me. That's paying off ability. Well, you know, um, I don't want to go back into uh, really bringing out all this because we're here for another reason. But um, when you talk about a black man, um, in the various one, two, three offices, and you can just about count them all on one hand, where black people has gotten these days, which was rightfully, they should have been there years and years ago, you know. You get back that little bit of thing about the Constitution of the United States, you know, that says all men are created equal. And then you get one, two, three black people sitting here, or one, two, three Spanish people sitting someplace, this is only appeasement to me, just token. This is, um, we're going to do this much, and we're going to shut up and still allow the same existing institutions to function in the same way that they have been functioning for 300 years or more. And they're still functioning that way. And I'll tell well, you something. What are these institutions that are still functioning as they these did 300 years ago? These penal institutions, I'm going to tell you something. I uh, happen to know a parole officer. And there was a girl that um, was in prison. And uh, they had this thing now that you got to have an address to come to in prison. You can't come out unless you have an address to come to. Job sponsor. You see. Home. Now, um, where do a person go who's been in prison for three or four years and has lost contact with the outside world? Because nobody is out here preparing a place for, for you to come to. You in prison, you've forgotten. But anyway, this girl came out of prison. She had to have an address. And I was instrumental in having a place that I could give her an address. Now, here's the person who had a third grade education. Being put back out here in this society as it is standing today, with no education, no job, you see, nowhere to go. But in an instance of where I could remain a human being, which this society has failed to remain human, I don't know what to call this society, really, but until this society can begin to deal humanly with people, I don't see anything being accomplished outside or inside the penal institutions. But on a human basis, I was able to bring this woman into a home, not a halfway house, but into a home where she could feel a human being in a home that she could clean up, that she could provide for herself. Now, of course, I had to reach to the welfare department because she has no training, you know, which is the next uh, executor 
in this society. <laughs> The welfare, you know. Yes, but you can't suggest that uh, there's an this inquisition against is. this girl. It just doesn't exist. Daisy, 300 what? years ago, they wouldn't have had this. Let me take an example. 300 Let years ago, it shouldn't have been. But right now, you know, Dolly, because this society Daisy, geared itself that way. Take this example, Daisy. This young lady right now, uh, uh, make her older than three years of age, make her a teenager. Do you know that right now under the Health, Education, and Welfare Department, we have mental uh, health clinics throughout the uh, our city, throughout the country, uh, uh, but let me speak specifically of our city. Uh, I happen to be uh, uh, working as the uh, chairman of the Mental Health uh, Committee of the Chestnut Hill Community Association, and I know that uh, we are in uh, something which is called Catchment Area 6B in the city of Philadelphia, which includes Chestnut Hill, Germantown, and Mount Airy, and we have now set up outpatient clinics in Mount Airy. There is one at 27 Mount Airy Avenue and one at 27 Mount Airy Avenue, which are di designed specifically to help the person in a position such as this to adjust to society where there will be compassionate, interested, professional people who will give of themselves professional the Christian people. virtue This is to the do next the thing that kills There's nothing me. wrong with professional, professional people. people. Professional people, don't, uh, people don't, don't do anything. We don't anything care about but professional people. We don't care about society. We don't care about nobody. 99% of our prisoners are going to come home anyway, whether you like it or not. Only 1% die in prison for physical problems, and capital punishment is out. So whether you help us or you don't help us, we're coming out. Prisoners are coming out. Every man you sentence to prison is going to come out. And the men that's coming out today probably been sentenced 20 years ago, or 15 years ago, or 10 years ago. and then. Your children and the next generation is going to suffer for the ones that are the judges are sending away today. Yeah, but the judge and is not sending away as such. What do you he's mean they're not sending away? He's responding to a problem. A he, problem? He's responding to a social problem which is created by both society then why and the person. Why is it that the, the average education is a sixth is trying grade? Trying to do to Pardon me, sir. This problem. Pardon me, sir. Why is it that the average education of the prisoners is a, the uh, sixth grade and the, uh, the IQ is around 65 and we don't have one rich one? Not one man with money in the state of Pennsylvania that uh, you could say has money on account. You Why? In a great are, many are, what do you mean? Problems, which what do you mean social? Very sociological. I'll tell you one thing. I'll never go to jail. I'll commit a crime because I could afford the best attorney around, and I'll reach somebody, whether it's a politician or whether it's somebody else. But I'll never go to prison. But don't you but think I society feel sorry wants for to help a, people? Like ABC. He's going to go are. to prison. Because Doesn't like, society want to help people like that? No. No, no. society, society, society nobody that wants that to help nobody anybody. Does. Nobody, because everybody's selfish. I don't agree. They're with thinking you. about themselves first. I don't agree. And with then you. they think of other people. I Would don't you, think our society is this way. Have you ever heard <laughs> me on any of these shows when I asked for money? Where were you at when I asked for money? To well, help a, the ex-prisoners. Uh, you're discussing Where something you? completely What extraneous. do you mean? You told me that, you, that you're trying to do but things. But you don't represent society to me. To me? To you me don't, the, I don't represent the, anybody. Represent I you. Represent, represent myself, my represent own ideas, and my own views. By our penal system, I'm not a by our judges, sir. I'm by our law enforcement people. These are the people I may cope society. with the rules and the regulations of society, but it doesn't mean that I conform to them. Let me say now, this. Uh, Speaking as I do from a position of enjoying our society, as a citizen of Philadelphia, it. I'm You're glad well that off. we have, for mm -hmm. example, the type of uh, law enforcement system that we do, because it gives me a feeling of very, very real security to walk in the streets of our town, knowing that our police department is good, that we're uh, run efficiently and fairly. And I am truly sorry for the person that might be hurt. I'm truly and sorry, fairly? and I want to do something to help him. But I'm looking for law enforcement. Beaten? I want law enforcement as a member of society. You I don't want, want anyone to be beaten, you want a police but I want state. law enforcement. You want a police and I know state. I speak for society you, when I say you this. You want a police state is what you want. By no means. Absolutely. Have, Absolutely. A, a police state is for the capitalists. A democratically controlled community. That's exactly what happened when we, the state Without police was people put into effect. I don't go on the basis of cynicism. Uh, May I? Joe, okay. I don't feel may I, I'm may not I, cynical about it. May I suggest and ask that we discuss as a panel and not as two individuals. Sure. Uh, yes. uh, 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 Dick, Sam, I wanted to ask you a question. Yes. Um, you apparently have spent some time in prison. I wanted to know whether you have one or two specific things that you think can be done. Why can't we get constructive and take advantage of the fact that you have had experience in prison? As an ex-prisoner, are there one or two things which you think that we can do or that society can do as a practical matter in prison at the present time? What are one or two or three of the prime things that need changing at this time? 
in the prisons, you right. know what I mean? Uh, mm, that's a hard, not too hard of a question, but it's difficult. Uh, well, for one thing, there's uh, education uh, have to be improved uh, to an extent in our prisons. Uh, I believe uh, that um, to educate a, a man, uh, I mean, not to let him come out the same way he went in, uneducated, if, he, if this is his case. Uh, I believe that uh, our administrative uh, uh, peoples in the prisons would have to have a, a change of uh, thinking of, towards the uh, prisoner. Uh, uh, or the man that's incarcerated, or the man that's uh, there. Um, mainly, uh, I uh, believe that our parole system, our parole rules must be changed. They're old, antiquated, uh, and uh, they do nothing to help. I agree with you. I have Man. seen uh, the operation of parole rules hindering people in their rehabilitation. True. I do know that, for instance, the Pennsylvania Board of Probation and Parole has a series of rules and regulations uh, which can be used to enforce even the most minute technical violation. Mm -hmm. For instance, certainly a man is, not, uh, is usually not permitted to drink. He has to be in at a certain hour. He uh, isn't allowed to uh, stay at a, at a woman's house unless he's married to her. He's, um, there are uh, numerous rules concerning time and concerning almost every part of his life. And that if any one of them is broken, the board has the power to bring these men back to prison for- Which is wrong. Which is You're wrong. I, this I, is and wrong. The other thing that I find is that the, the board of parole, uh, probation and parole, has, uh, there's practically no way of reviewing what they do at this time. They can put a man back for 10 years for a technical violation. You can't appeal from it. There's no effective redress. You're not allowed to bring in witnesses to show that what they've accused you of is wrong. They don't have to present witnesses no, against you. They right. can have the hearsay, something which was a letter to your probation agent can be presented. Yes. And this can be the basis for you going back that you consorted or you spoke to another, an ex-criminal on one occasion, you're back in jail. Mm. You can't appeal. You can't bring your witnesses to say that's not true mm. and, and this is what exists now and yes. I think this is one of the things that just the fact that this is possible it's not used in every instance I think that in many cases the parole agents are relatively fair and I know quite a few who are very fair and try to help in rehabilitation Thanks. but in some instances just the fact that an, a person knows that he can be put back unfairly for any breach of a minute technical rule is enough to hinder in his rehabilitation mm -hmm. that's true uh, well uh, you said you knew uh, uh, several parole officers that are, are good. Uh, I would say they're very rare. Uh, why I say this is because uh, we seem to find our parole officers that are, are not trying to be the big brother that they are supposed to be to the men he have uh, in his charge. Uh, it seems as though they are, uh, maybe they are trying to follow the, the book. Uh, well, you know, uh, the book is uh, too old. Right. Also, they have too many people. Ideally, they should have maybe 25, and if they have 50, 60, 70, or even 100 people under their jurisdiction, how can they be a big brother? They don't have time. They have uh, so many things to do, so many people to see, that it's not entirely their fault, and it's partly getting back to this. It's society's fault. We'd have, we're cutting down on all appropriations. If it, it would be an ideal situation if each parole agent had maybe 20 or 25 people, and he could give them the attention they needed. He can help them in rehabilitation, in finding jobs, in getting them into appropriate uh, schools and into appropriate training programs. But it's almost impossible with all of the work that they do have, and society is cutting down the parole board's allocations have been slashed, they can't get allocations for extra money, so it's not entirely their fault. Uh, it's partly a society's fault, again. I yes, Frank because Grant. what happens is another kind of penal institution is being established outside it's of true. the penal institution That's right. with the parole officers. That's right. You see. Uh, I agree with you wholeheartedly, Daisy, because once you're out, you're still in prison because you are restrained from living as a free citizen because of the, these old, antiquated uh, rules that you have to live under. Uh, they, uh, uh, as you quoted some of them, uh, this, I say, should be changed. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm not saying it should be changed, 
in, in order for it to be a better time, they got to be changed. They must move up with the times as uh, all other things are moving up with uh, uh, progress. I think one thing should be added, that we're talking about parole under the Pennsylvania board. Yes. We have another type of parole, which is the parole or the probation under the jurisdiction of the Philadelphia courts, if we're talking about Philadelphia. And there, the parole agent does not have as much power because That's everything right. he does is under the supervision of the sentencing judge. Mm -hmm. And as long as, while the parole agent might recommend that this man be returned for various violations, it's up to the sentencing judge to determine Yes, Despite um, this, should this man mm -hmm. continue? Should yeah, he be given he goes another back chance? Into court and I think you're right. right. And I think in the in the uh, Philadelphia courts and in the local courts, other in other places where the parole and probation remains under the jurisdiction of the sentencing judge, right. that generally these are much fairer and there is much more chance for individual progress. Mm -hmm. uh, the judge can and very often does uh, forget about one particular rule if it's in the best interest of, of the individual. Yeah, that's right. Well, we're, uh, you're right, uh, Dick. Uh, we're, we're mostly speaking about the state parole board. Uh, and, and one thing I'd like to say to Cal, uh, why it's uh, uh, so hard for a man to We'll say find the type of job that he probably could qualify. We said we have a uh, the prison uh, itself that uh, takes a man in, and he's supposed to be, have been trained to his return to society. Uh, what is the training good for if he walks back out to society and cannot put this back into everyday practice, or he, he he's uh, because of the application that he have to, uh, that the parole board itself says that he must notify or tell his employer that he is an ex-con. He is an ex-con because he have to say, I am on parole. Yes. Uh, now, your application says, have you ever been convicted of, a, uh, of, uh, of an of a offense? Yes. And uh, so you put yes, to be honest. Uh, then yeah. they say, detail. Yes. Give detail. Huh? Now you go into the detail. As you said, uh, he puts down, I was convicted of embellishment. Yeah. Boom. Right away you says, I can't use him. Uh, well, I'm not saying that. Right, well, uh, well, I'm just saying, tell him the other Joe, way around now. Every time I talk, you immediately talk. Wait Give a minute. A to make one it's on the same on subject. subject. It's on the know, same subject. Let, let him lie here. now. Yes. I want him to lie. I want him to fill out the application and say he's not a a parolee, he's not a criminal. He has yes. committed no crime. Yes, but let now, me what, what is the result then, sir? But what is the result? I want to tell you what the results are. The parole agent then comes over and talks to you. Yes. You see? Believe so he loses right. no matter which way he well, goes. Well, not necessarily. Let me answer his question. Mm -hmm. I would say this, that what you say is perfectly logical, and I can understand why a person uh, in prison would be faced with this dilemma. It's a very, very real problem. And it would suggest that the thrust of uh, uh, our effort should be in the area of true re rehabilitation. I would think, for example, if we took the same prisoner who was going to go out and had been convicted of embezzlement, if some overtures could be made prior to his release with various firms, various individuals who have shown a, shown a predisposition to be sympathetic toward men in his position, where perhaps an interview, uh, even uh, at the uh, penitentiary, could be held, held with this man, so that uh, the um, potential employer could have an opportunity to structure whether or not this man could truly fit into a situation. Now, I know this is something which is uh, uh, not uh, par for the course, but it's something which I think could be done. Mm -hmm. And I think many men like myself would respond very strongly to such a <coughs> suggestion, you see. So therefore, I, I, I feel, as you do, that uh, the system has got to be uh, 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 changed. There must be a greater opportunity for true rehabilitation so that the prisoner can come out in society and be accepted. But I don't agree with Joe uh, with his abject cynicism concerning the position of society, which seems to be that the prisoner, once convicted, is no longer acceptable under any circumstances right. by society.